All right, everyone. It is time. The moment is here. We are going to begin looping. Now, if you are getting into looping, it might seem pretty daunting, uh, but we're just going to do the literal first step, which is can you make one layer? Like literally the first layer. Um, so when I say layer, a lot of people can build layers on top of their loops. Um, I'm going to do everything at the beginning of the course, assuming you only have one channel. So even if you have a multi-track looper, um, don't worry, we're gonna get into like multi-track looping and arranging and all that kind of stuff later on for all the people who have um, the bigger units. But I'm gonna start from the beginning uh, for, and we're just gonna go on, on the track of like, everyone only has one track and that means you can use any looper and you can do this. So the trick to looping is timing. Now, when you're playing an instrument, uh, typically you are going to strum through a chord progression. So say my chord is gonna be a G and I'm gonna just go like this, or G, we'll do it like that. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, one. So that that's me going through like one sequence. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. So that's like my bar or when it comes to looping, you can pick however long you want to set up your phrase. The way I currently loop is the first phrase that you record, and this is kind of standard for all loop pedals. Um, the first phrase you record is going to determine the length of every single phrase after that. So whatever the longest portion of your loop is going to be is the thing that you need to record first. So typically for me, that's the chord progression. So say I'd be doing like Shape of You by Ed Sheeran, it'd be like. And then I would begin the loop and then everything would build around that duration. So the first thing that you need to do is understand how the input of the loop is going to happen. The loop is going to start as soon as you push record. Whatever your thing is, it will record it then. So this whole time it's currently recording. Now, as soon as I push this button again, it's on, it will play back. This orange little light means it's overdubbing. So right now it's just playing. So typically with this one and a lot of loopers, what they'll do is once you hit record and then you finish recording, it will have like an automatic overdub. You just need to make sure you turn off that overdub. So you just do that by pushing the play button again, usually, and it will turn it off. You'll figure it out on whatever your unit is. So for this one, I'm is I'm really lucky. I can pick my track, push play, and then I can stop the looper here. Now, I don't know how everyone else's loopers work. Um, I know only how the RC300s one work, um, and I you can just Google like the instruction manual if you have a different kind of looper. But whatever it is to reset the loop, you just do it. They usually have really simple ones. For the the RC300, you just hold the stop button on whatever track you just recorded. It will delete it. Um, I believe the RC30, I can't remember. I haven't used it in ages. But you can just you can stand on both pedals at the same time and it will fully clear all your loops. It's really cool. Um, but yeah, now that is the, the whole function. You hit record. Now it's playing back overdub. You pause the overdub and now it's just playing back normally. Stop and you can just clear your loop. That is the simple mechanics of all this thing does. There's nothing crazy about what a loop pedal is going to do outside of that. It is just, if you can just understand the mechanics of record, overdub, which means I'm recording over the top of my recording and then stop, that's it. And then you can clear the loops. Now to nail looping, you need to pick whatever your phrase is. And then when you finish that phrase, you need to end the loop at the start of the next phrase. I can't stress this enough. An example of this is going to be, I'm gonna play four chords, uh, four strums or whatever, four beats. So I go one, two, three, four. So say that's the duration of the loop I wanna go. I'm gonna start recording on the first strum. So at the same time as when I'm about to strum, I push down the loop pedal. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that's, so that's me strumming. Now, when I go to re to, when I go to 
finish the recording and like whatever my phrase is that I want to do, I need to make sure that I'm pushing down on the end of the record button when I'm about to hit the one again. So I go one, two, three, four, play. One, two, three, four. So you can see how I've got it in time. So you want to make sure that you're going one, two, three, four. And instead of strumming down on the one again, that's when you push down on the pedal. The biggest mistake that you will ever have is someone is like, okay, they're going to go one, two, three, four. So you see I'm cutting it off. I'm losing that four because I do the last strum and then I panic and then I immediately end the loop. And what I'm doing is I'm clipping the end of that phrase. That puts you out of time. So say for instance, I start strumming. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. And then I bring my loop in. And see how it just goes out of time. Um, now that is the biggest mistake that you're ever gonna make. So when you do grab your loop pedal for the first time, this is the only exercise we're gonna do. You're gonna grab your loop pedal, you're gonna figure out how the recording button works, mess around with it, make heaps of mistakes. Like seriously, just absolutely jump into the deep end. Always remember, fear is a mile wide, inch deep. You need to try stuff um, and then you'll be like, oh, that's not so bad. Now, as simple as that is, you could just play one note if you want. I don't really care what you do. But pick how long you want the phrase to go. If you're going to go, all right, I want the phrase to go bum, 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 bum. That's how I want it to go. So then I'm going to go bum, 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 bum. And then you'll get it more in time. So that is the trick of what we want to do. So we're going to go bum. So that's in time. So when we are recording, that is our number one priority is you figure out the time. One, two, three, four, boom. So there is nothing more crazy to that. This can go in any way. So say for instance, I'm playing Shape of You um, and my phrase is a bit longer. So my phrase is gonna be So I need to come back on that first chord of the progression. So I'm gonna go. Oh, whoops, I just, sorry, I don't have my headphones on. Uh, so I can't hear exactly what's happening there. So what we're gonna do here is you're gonna go. Bum, bum. So do you see how I got that? Yeah, so that's in time. So you always got to remember when you're about to play the start of the next phrase, that's when you're pushing down on the loop. You're not pushing down on the loop at the end of the phrase. You're playing it at the start of the next phrase. So always start next phrase is when you're pushing down. Um, and always make sure as well, you don't make this other rookie error, which is... Did you see... When I did that, I started the strum and then I pushed the loop pedal. That is a 100% rookie error. I've done it before. I've gotten too excited and then I didn't time my first strum with the loop pedal. So um, that's something that you really need to be aware of. So when it coming down on the, on the loop pedal, you are strumming and pushing down at the same time. Bah. All right. So... That's it for the very first exercise. You're just gonna pick any chord that you wanna do, uh, pick any note that you wanna do, pick the timing that you're gonna go for, and then when you go to hit the note, you push down, and then when you go to repeat the phrase, you don't push down, like you don't strum, you just push down at the start of the next phrase. So example is one, two, three, four. So when I go back to that one, that's when I push down. Um, can't stress it enough, you need to nail that rhythm. All right, well, end of that one.
Try that out. See how you go. See how you go with the timing and the rhythm. And then uh, we will discuss mindsets and, uh, and how you can start approaching uh, your looping. All right. See you guys in the next video.